Welcome to the Moon and You podcast. My name is Susan Hart. Today we are looking at the new moon in Pisces and how that might affect us emotionally and financially. Before I dive into the content, I'd like to acknowledge country. In the spirit of reconciliation, the Moon in You acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who may be listening to this podcast today. As I move through the years, more often than not, I look at my past memories and twinges of regret trickle to the top that agitate me. Like any good Western yogi, I brush it off and sit back on my mat, meditate and do spiritual stuff that distracts me from any emotions that might escape. Like all humans, I too wanted to move away from pain and into joy, yet these twinges of regret got in the way and I became stuck in a memory loop of old wounds that every now and then come up for review. I asked myself a question. What if I could turn these wounds into scars? Now you might ask what the difference is. Scars have healed and the mark remains as a reminder of what happened. Wounds are not healed and lay festering. Poisoning the skin around it and eventually leading to sickness and in some cases death. Scars can be observed, touched and they are no longer causing you pain. You can still remember the incident of how you got the scar, but the emotion has long left you. Wounds can be observed, but you can't touch them as it causes infection, more pain, bleeding, and it's really messy. Listener, I think you understand where I'm going with this. So how did I turn my emotional wounds into scars? There is no easy way to say this. You must do the work of observing your emotions. Allow them to rise within the body, release all energy through crying, screaming, running, writing, dancing, whatever it is that resonates with you. And let go of any attachment to the memory that brings you into a low vibration. Now these low vibrations that I'm talking about are anger, resentment, revenge, jealousy, envy, shame, guilt, frustration. I'd like to share with you a quote from one of my wonderful authors that I love to read about. His name is David Hawkins, and he is the author of Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. And in that he says... The elimination of suppressed emotions has a positive health benefit. It decreases the overflow of energy into the body's autonomic nervous system. And that's what I'm talking about here in regards to expressing your emotions. It's very healing for the body. I was amazed at my transformation when I began to do the work. My husband was pleasantly shocked when my usual flare-ups were replaced by a cool head and thoughtful conversation. The art of letting go is powerful, and I invite you to go deep. Ensure you have the tools to use and friends to speak to, and for more and for more difficult emotions, you may need professional assistance like a counsellor. It's difficult sometimes to admit that you might need help, but people are there for you. And... There is no better time to dive deep into emotional chaos than with the new moon in Pisces. It resonates. This new moon resonates with the energy of Pisces. So during the new moon, you are invited to observe your feelings without the need to control anything. Just feel, release and let go. The energy of Pisces will support you through this. So that then leads me to the gift of Pisces and the deep healing that can be yours during this new moon cycle. 
No matter where our sun or moon is in our natal chart, we are all affected by the new moon in Pisces. The new moon signifies new beginnings and is a time to set the seeds for the future. So the new moon in Pisces is where we let our imagination take us to our ideal future. Keep a journal over the coming days and write about your emotional flare-ups. Ask yourself questions that will help you understand why your emotions have stirred so intensely. Journal about your dreams and what's stopping you from achieving them. Is it money, time, talent or a combination? With Pisces in the 12th house, it is said, this is where magic happens. Journal about your dreams and what's stopping you from achieving them. Is it money, time, talent or a combination? With Pisces in the 12th house, it is said, this is where magic happens. For me, that means to set your intentions during this new moon. Visualize yourself already there and letting go of how it will come to pass. This is the biggest lesson that I have found myself learning. Instead of grasping and trying to move mountains to make my dreams come true, the more gentler way is to know that what you're dreaming has already happened. But how it comes to pass is really none of your business. That's where the universe comes in and brings opportunities to you. It is your job to look out for those opportunities and to act upon those opportunities that come through. Don't get frustrated when things don't work out because something around the corner might be a little bit better. I mean, this is from my own experience. This is what has happened for me. This is the original formula of manifesting, bringing whatever you want into the world. Deep healing takes place here as well. This is a time of great compassion. and You may feel you can express your feelings more openly. Pisces will do that to you. Old wounds of the past, regrets, fears also are healed here. Meditation will help you connect with that part of you to help you look at and heal that which has hurt you. Forgiveness of yourself and others is one of the most powerful things you can do at this time. Release negative emotions and feel more open to expressing your deep feelings. Now if you are not sure how to go about doing this, go to Byron Katie at thework.com. There are many videos and a worksheet you can use. It is an extraordinary process that will allow you to be gentle with yourself, to end your suffering and to set yourself free. Friends, family, a professional counsellor, Byron Katie, these are all the wonderful support options that you have to help you with your emotions that may seem to be a bit too intense for you to manage on your own. So I'd just like to stop here now before I go on to the suggestions for what you can do during the new moon and acknowledge my beautiful friend Kerry Hurrigan who has spent many years studying evolutionary astrology. She's my great supporter and everything that I learn, I learn from her. Suggestions for you to do during the new moon in Pisces. So journal specifically about your dreams I would probably sit under a tree as well because pressing your back up against a tree and feeling the grass beneath your feet does wonders for me I'm sure it will do wonders for you here's a good one clean one room in your house that is frustrating you I have several that are frustrating me at the moment but all we need to do is one and clean it and I mean like cleaning everything the fan the light bulbs the the skirting boards shutters if you have them the windows the floors really get in there and clean it listen to your gut the first thing that actually comes to the gut or then you think oh your intuition kicks in believe it during this time the new men in Pisces forgive someone Truly forgive someone. It will send you the most amazing feeling. 
I always like, if you can, another good thing you can do is help a sheltered animal. Maybe pay for their medical bills, maybe donate food to an animal shelter, or you might even want to adopt. And, and always we say meditate. If you haven't already downloaded the free app that we have, there are eight guided meditations on that app. And yeah, it's completely free for you to download. It's called The Moon and You app in the Apple Store. Okay, so let's move on now to how the new moon in Pisces might affect you financially. We have developed a free financial literacy class called Budgeting on the New Moon. So we invite you at this time as well to take us up on that offer. Pop onto the website, themooninyou.com. Go to what we love under the members area, sign up, and you'll have free access to this beautiful literacy class. Okay, so let's have a look and see what the lovely Kerry has in store for us in regards to how this beautiful new moon will affect us financially. Setting seeds. When the new moon enters Pisces, we set the seeds with our imagination and that makes anything possible. Whatever can be imagined can emerge into reality. Let's just ponder on that just for a moment. Whatever can be imagined can emerge into reality. The mutability of Pisces allows for constant change and adaptability. We learn through Pisces to engage with the very source of creation, a higher intelligence with higher meanings blending with our own personal existence. A blind faith exists in Pisces in knowing all has a way of working out and only good will come from any situation. The feeling of going with the flow is a Pisces gift, but it can be unnerving as we tend to feel out of control. The opposing sign of Pisces is Virgo, which serves as a balance point. Virgo gives us the balance between control and letting go. Setting a budget. A budget is a perfect example of this. Using a budget, we learn to properly manage our money without spending it on impulsive buying that can arise if we give fully into going with the flow. Pisces represents large life cycles, while Virgo looks at the details. In Pisces, we can feel victimized, overwhelmed, and prone to suffering, sending us into giving up and escapism, and one way to escape is to spend money. Now, the other way is to watch way too much live streaming, which is what I do. Because I'm a bookkeeper by trade, and I have been for over 25 years, and I work in the financial sector, budgeting comes second nature to me. So during this new moon in Pisces, spending money is not what I do when I feel the overflow I tend to overeat and I tend to overwatch things. I could watch well, eight episodes in one series. So setting a budget, if you tend to overspend, is the best way to contain yourself. The universe has your back. The universe or God or consciousness or spirit Whatever it is that means to you, the universe has the answer to everything we ask for and the answer is always yes. When applying this energy to budgeting, saying things like, I wish I had more money or I need more money, the answer is yes. You will always need more money. Yes. <laughs> You'll always need more money. But one just gets stuck in the realm of wishing, doesn't it? So if you continually say these things like, I wish I had more money, I wish I had a bigger house, I wish I had a bigger car, I wish I had this and I wish I had that, you'll always be caught in that loop of wishing because the universe will always say yes to your wishing. We must be involved in the details and put the effort, which is Virgo, into the details while having the vision and allowing the creative forces to assist us, which is Pisces. 
So when making affirmations, it is always recommended to say things in the present, starting with, I have a lot of money. I have a beautiful home. I have everything that I want and need right now. And I am is another affirmation that you can start with. And being in gratitude as if it has already happened in your life is the key to manifestation. For example, you can say, I am so grateful my income is continuously increasing. That's a really good one. Moving on, love the child within. Do you feel you deserve money? And if not, why? This is a really good question to journal. It is extremely difficult to invite more money into your life when you feel you don't deserve it. This relates to looking after the little child within. That part of you needs love, compassion, understanding and nurturing. Set the seeds in the Pisces new moon to connect with the source of all creation, to nurture the little you, the child within. Do you use money as an escape? Do you overspend by using other people's money like a credit card? Because make no misunderstanding here. Credit cards are other people's money and you do not want to get it caught up in that. Taking care of yourself includes taking care of your money. Use the new moon in Pisces to heal and love yourself by mastering your money and recognize the great value you bring to the world and those you love. The first step in mastering your money is finding out what you spend your money on. That is the first part of budgeting. In the course, in the free course, there is an Excel spreadsheet for you to keep track of everything that you've spent during last month. And then once you understand, you can then eliminate what no longer serves you in your spending habits. Okay, my friends, I'll leave it at that. I do hope you join me on Budgeting on the New Moon. It has been going now for a couple of months. It is a class that you take at your own pace. I am always here for you. You can email me anything, susan at themooninyou.com. I'm the only one who will look at your emails and I'm the only one who will answer them. The other team member is, of course, Kerry Hurrigan, who helps me to understand the astrological side. And I bring wisdom to the financial side. We both want you to succeed. Please come and join our family. Here's one last quote I'd like to leave with you, and it's one that I have made up myself personally. And I love it. Remember this. Money is the root of all goodness. Gain a lot and give it all away. Until next time. Bye for now.